given that we are against all religions, does it make any sense to focus more on one than the other? And if we're doing so, can we justify it in terms that aren't politically motivated or are somehow tainted? Well, if, if you talk about attacking a problem in general, and in, in this kind of sense, we would be talking about all religion as a problem. Yes. Uh, it, that seems to be a straw man argument that people that are trying to argue against you, not just in terms of religion, but they're like, um, when the gun debate came up, they were like, well, why are we, why are we pointing fingers at gun control? Shouldn't we be talking about mental health? Shouldn't we be talking about uh, video games? Shouldn't we be talking about movies and Hollywood and the glorification of vi- violence and the United States versus other countries? And yeah. um, It seems pretty obvious to me that um, anyone that wants to solve a problem obviously wants to consider all possible solutions um, but like you have to prioritize <laughs> like yeah. you can't well no one person can can solve a big problem um, but even a, a large group of people usually can't solve um, especially a, a giant ideological problem like um, you know violence in the minds of youth or something or yeah religion um yeah these without are... without some prior prioritizing like what we should attack first so in the yeah. gun control debate it was um most people that are advocates for gun control are like well we need to do this first to try to potentially cause less deaths and then research the other stuff for fewer fewer deaths, fewer deaths. You're a good man <laughs> um so but, my uh, biggest grammatical pet peeve uh, uh less and fewer it's so. not ten items or less. It's, it's ten, ten items up? or fewer. Oh god! I hate so many, so many grocery stores for that reason. Um, it's cool though. Publix gets it right. Evidently, yeah. yeah. One day they'll too probably cave, cave to the plebeian masses. Well, that that's how English language works, or it seems to be, is that if if something gets used long enough it becomes the norm well it's language it's not like yeah. there's, there's there's no golden rule book that says it has to be this way yeah it just has evolved this way yeah that doesn't mean in the meantime you can't get a little irritated well anyway. and your irritation is trying to attack the problem the problem being that people misuse well most people don't use the word fewer at all which is sad like you, for, you forget it exists or it's almost one of those words that depending on the context sounds wrong like it sounds like a made up word like funner that's funner that's fewer um, now great it sounds okay to me well, if I'm you just, say anything with that accent though to be fair it sounds stupid yeah that's fewer but um anyway like, again attacking a problem um like religion um to get us back on track here was this is us merging back into our previous it's the same you know I don't most atheists don't focus on, you know, the the corner cases of religion or the religions that well, basically some, you can just toss out. So like cults, everyone except cultists thinks that cults are just yeah, obviously they're bad. You just get rid of cults. So okay, get rid of those. And then I mean, if you're if you're talking about numbers, like Christianity, number one, it's got I think two point two somewhere in there billion. Islam, I think, has 1.3 to 1.5 billion. Hinduism is 800 to 900 million. Like, okay, that's two-thirds of humanity taken care of with just those religions. So if you're just going by sheer pragmatism, you know, you're going to focus on, like, the big four. Uh, And I would say, especially for us, like, we have no influence on what Hindus do because most Hindus live on the other side of the world. We are certainly not big enough stars to well, that, affect yeah, so it's, their So there's a language, a language, a location barrier, a culture sure. barrier. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know enough to even speak to it other than the basic tenets, which I think are wrong. Like, I don't know, gods exist. But in our world, there are two major monotheistic religions. And yes, I'm going to ignore Judaism because it is a tiny religion. I think it's got 15 million adherence in the U.S. maybe? According to this, this is 2005, though. It's 0.22% of the world. Yeah. Uh, it's a smaller... Just to give you a... You know, give you an idea of size, there are more Sikhs in the world, or um, 12 times as many Buddhists, or... I don't know. Apparently, it's about 14 million. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Six million in Israel, 5.4 million in the U.S., about 500,000 in France, and it's down from there really quickly. Um, I guess it's still kind of small when you compare to, like, Christianity as a whole. No, but the Christianity is, yeah, two billion yeah. or fourteen million. It's, whew. yeah. But anyway, culturally, yes, fairly significant. Um, obviously, the ancestor of Christianity and Islam. But you know, if you want to look at what's going to touch on Western civilization, which is the relevant one to us, it's going to be Christianity and Islam. First of all, we are, as Western civilizations are, mired in the Middle East and Islamic countries right now. Politically, they're the craziest right now, just with the Arab Spring and all the things that have been happening with that. You know, we've obviously invaded two predominantly Muslim countries. Um, we are being attacked by Islamists and you know extremists, and uh, and then for our day to day life, Christianity is what we have grown up culturally, you know, awash in, and so. You know, th those are the relevant too, and they cover half the planet. So, you know, for me, if I'm going to talk about something, obviously it's going to be focusing on probably those two. And then the rest, like Shintoism. I got nothing on Shintoism. I, I've never even heard of it, so I have nothing it's, against uh, them it's currently. It's an animist spiritual system. Okay. You know, trees have spirits, things like that. Is that under the Not pagan? to completely over it sounds like it's under the pagan umbrella. It would probably gets... fall under that. Yeah. Um, I, you know, at least, yeah, the world is more imbued. It's more pantheistic in that sense. Yeah. It's, nature is spiritual, things like that. So in any case, so like if we're going to start talking about a religion, it would make sense, I think, that we would focus on those two. Uh, culturally relevant, or the ones we're more familiar with. When you look at Christianity, and although day-to-day, -day, you know, I'm going to see a lot more like love Jesus signs and I'm going to see love Allah signs or whatever. Christianity is more or less benign as it stands. I'm, if I'm looking at Christianity on the world stage, I'm not worried about Chris, like Christian extremists toppling governments worldwide or taking over the democratic process throughout the world or... Well, well, most of the at least modern results of Christian extremists are like abortion clinics being blown up or um, they were it, one off it's been yeah and, and even though they're technically mass you know I mean they're mass killings but they're not they don't happen often they don't um, have worldwide networks of yeah. loosely affiliated cells that are you know fighting for an ideal like like jihad you get jihad within Islam it's an idea that is you know rooted in 1500 years sorry 1400 years of you know, their theology and you yeah. know, their religious systems. Now, obviously, the meaning has changed and been utilized in different ways. Um, so now it's usually used more in a sense of insurgency, at least in popular culture. Though it's often been used for an idea of, like, spiritual struggle. So you're not fighting an outer enemy, you're fighting yourself and overcoming your own weaknesses and sins and things like that. But right now, you know, if we're looking at world religions and the way they can impact my life Christianity a little benign more day to day I'm looking around the world and I'm watching daily news reports of Sunni on Shiite or vice versa you know car bombings I'm looking at uh, you know the rising radicalism in Syria you're looking at the tensions within Egypt against the Islamist party you know of Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood you look at Tunisia where women are been steadily losing rights to the Islamist regime that's there. And I don't know how I couldn't focus a bit more on Islam, because right now Islam, it's kind of like there. I have two diseases, like a virus, and right now one's in remission, and the other one is sort of flared up and causing me havoc. Well, I mean, I'm still, I have both, and I want to worry about both, and I don't want to focus on one to the exclusion of the other and then get sicker as a result. But right now, I've got this flare up that I got to take care of, or I'm going to focus on. Yeah, both both have immediate like human rights um, issues and um, the potential for death in general, like especially innocent death. Um, but obviously, one is flaring up, as you said, um, a little bit more frequently than than another. That the you know the main problem in Christianity right now is just argument over gay marriage or 
Yeah. At um, least in, and, in the West, at least. Yeah. I mean, and now don't get me wrong, there's a lot to be said there. I mean, there's been, you know, sort of the peeling back of uh, women's rights with regards to reproductive yeah. uh, services, uh, whether it be access to abortions. Uh, there's been a continuous push at state level to pull those back, especially in red states. Uh, whether it's just sexual education, yeah, gay rights. I mean, you get, there are problems, but in a sense, they're being fought through our secular means. So they're going through the secular army. <laughs> well, I mean, they're going through our political machine, right. which is at least ostensibly secular. When you look over in the Middle East and stuff, I mean, this this is not just a battle of ideas. It is a battle of bodies. It's a battle of, you know, a body count. And, you know, I let's face it, we don't have Christian suicide bombers right now. You know, and it's it's fair to be able to point out that there do seem to be fairly easy manipulations of Islamic teachings to generate a consistent stream of militant extremists. Now, not saying Christianity couldn't do that, but I have read quite a few things that do make it a little bit more compelling that as Islam was a religion that was effectively forged during war, as... Muhammad was fighting against the other cities around uh, the Middle East, you know, uh, Medina, Mecca, all those, you know, it, he was espousing, you know, a, sort of a religion of the sword because his people were soldiers Yeah. Uh, to start with. Now, yeah, of course, as people translate out of that over the years into a peacetime, I can see how then people are going to start interpreting it in a way that's maybe not so militaristic, but those underpinnings that motivation seems to be fairly easily brought out it seems to be working pretty consistently now it's not to dismiss economic factors political factors you know geopolitical factors and things like that but there are plenty of poor christians in south america who aren't launching suicide bombings against you know yeah the more affluent western countries things like that they're so, actually trying to help each other they're trying to receive help they're like you know, they're focused on humanity rather than how their religion can somehow help them overcome an enemy. And Yeah. Well, and the idea is, like, uh, this is not saying that all Muslims are inherently extremist or that Islam itself must be interpreted this way or should be interpreted this way. But the fact that it seems to be fairly easily interpreted this way seems problematic. And so, yeah, I course i think that that is more of an issue right now because there is effectively a global war around africa middle east uh you know indonesia those areas there's a lot of tension there yeah and if it's at least substantially based not wholly maybe not even you know the majority of it could be just part of a plurality of reasons but if it makes up 20 percent of the reasons why maybe militant extremism is a problem in the Middle East, well, then it deserves to be addressed. Now, it doesn't mean you don't address the cultural factors, the political factors, the economic factors that also feed all of those things together, because not one of these is completely, you know, responsible for the outcome. But you should also focus on the religious. why does this happen in poor, you know, predominantly Muslim countries and not sub-Saharan Africa and predominantly Christian countries in the same way. Yeah. Now, there are other atrocities that have been done. You look at Rwanda, and you, know, you had the Catholic Church, at least the members of it there, uh, were have at least been charged with exciting violence against members of an enemy tribe. So it's not that it's not there, but at that point I ask, well, just because it was a church member, was it church teachings that were causing that, or was that just a guy who was putting tribal loyalty ahead of whatever? Same questions can be asked the other way. Yeah. But why is it region wide? Yeah. You know, not part of it. Anyway, all I know is, you know, with the whole thing about that flared up about Sam Harris being called an Islamophobe, Islamophobe, you know, it seems relevant to be able to ask the question can I attack this reasonably? Is there reason to attack it reasonably? And in doing so, is giving it special attention inherently problematic? And I think no. Then there's the term itself. I was reading an article. I'll need to try and find it. 
Uh, but they were talking about what does it even mean to be Islamophobic? Like, you know what it is to be like ethnophobic or something. You know, you're you're afraid or fearful of a race. Right. You know, something you can identify. But to be fearful of a religion seems a little odd because you're basically saying I'm afraid of a set of ideas. Okay, well, if I'm just criticizing the religion and not the people who hold it in the same way, I think that these ideas are potentially problematic. They can often be a catalyst whatever, yeah. towards you know extremist tendencies or whatever. Yeah. If by focusing on that, because I think it's a more dangerous catalyst, is going to make me Islamophobic, you're saying, like, I'm afraid of dangerous ideas, which seems like a stupid thing to say. Yeah, I am afraid of dangerous ideas. I, you know, you're a, you're a danger phobe. Yeah, but I, yeah, I don't like danger, uh, and and that's sort of what this article is getting at. Is like if if you're truly just attacking the religious tenets themselves, the idea of the religion, what it contains, what it preaches, what it's about, at the end of the day, and you find those ideas repugnant, and especially if you have intellectual reasons, you can point to justifications for why. How can you? Islamophobia seems like a, an empty charge. Yeah, it, it seems like something that was brought up um, by Muslims that probably felt like they were personally attacked. Um, and, and I understand that. we In conversations with Christians, we get it all the time. It's like anytime I try to point something out about their religion that I disagree with or whatever, they yeah. feel like they're personally attacked. But, well, see, these but, are beliefs that if, if they're truly held... You know, and they it, live them, and, and they live them, and all. of course, it's an attack on that person. You're you're questioning the intellectual integrity of the person who holds this belief. Yeah. So of course they will take it personally. I get that. People question. I mean, when I have a paper edited for the site or anything, and it's a, like you should, this sentence is awkward or this paragraph doesn't make sense. Like, even I get a little defensive, and it's like this is nothing. I mean, okay, I reworked the paragraph. No right. big deal. I'm not having to like rework my worldview all of a sudden. So I get why people are sensitive to it, and I get why moderates might feel, this is crap, that's not what my religion is about. But but it is. I mean, whether it's not that way for you doesn't mean that maybe there isn't some truth to the idea that it is a little more dangerous, it's a little more volatile maybe than Christianity. I and mean, you can point, to, maybe not Christianity, ignore that. What about uh, the example in another article I was reading today? Uh, Jainism which preaches as like one of its core tenets the sacred uh, nature of life. These are people who have taken to their extreme often apparently walk around with brooms in front of them to make sure they don't step on insects. They won't go out at night because they can't see where they're stepping. It's like complete nonviolence to the point of being impractical. You know, we would look at it and go, if you're taking it a little extreme. But I look at that and I go, you know, don't think I have to worry about those people. Because the extremely nonviolent are not very likely to murder me on a whim, you know? Right. Well, but if you've got a culture of holy war or something like this that weaves its way through your your mythos, uh, yeah, it seems like you can be catalyzed towards violent acts more easily than the guy who's dedicated to nonviolence. So if we can point out that there's an objective difference between these two and the people who live those lives then I at least have a basis for saying maybe there is a reason I should look at this religion. Maybe there's a reason we should all look at this. And if you disagree, then maybe you should help me if that's not what your religion is about. It seems like, without knowing or doing a ton of research, but it seems like the term Islamophobe or Islamophobia came up to almost say, like, the discussion shouldn't be even on the table. Like, it's this whole thing that obviously, obviously you and I disagree with. Like, the fact that it's the people that say... You shouldn't be able to criticize religion. No. And that's ridiculous. Um, not only do we live in a free society here. I will criticize whatever. I in the United States free. of America. I mean, we this, this country was specifically founded um, with, you know, rules and stuff or the allowance that we can criticize our government and not be executed for it. Yeah. Um, the, the, like, political cartoons are huge in this country. And some countries that just wouldn't even fly, like you would be arrested or murdered. Or the guy, or, uh, the John Stewart of Egypt, I yeah. can't remember his name, but yeah, yeah. basically get in trouble for criticizing Morsi. Then, in probably way nicer terms than John Stewart gets away with criticizing, you right. know, especially like Bush. If you want to go back to the 
Hey, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Those but, days. Um, and, and we First did, of all, so we will criticize whatever we damn well please. And you can judge me based on my arguments and right. my criticisms. You can't just shut me down by saying, well, you're just an Islamophobe. Well, no. Whoa. First of all, what does that mean? I'm afraid of Islam? Well, okay. Maybe there's something there. What do you mean by that? Yeah. yeah, I think certain tenets are a little dangerous because of how people tend to interpret them. If they're if they're trying to, it seems like it's a, it's one of those tactics or one of those terms that gets thrown around like racist to say if you get called an Islamophobe and you don't challenge it, that means you hate all Muslims. And well, obviously, the, that's that is not, the biggest problem is the yeah. idea that using Islamophobe as a term for basic Muslim phobe. Yeah. Those are two completely different things. Islam as an idea set in a vacuum based on the text themselves having maybe never been believed by another human being could be interpreted as such. Yeah. How could you ever charge me with racism, racism at that point? But really what you're saying, I think, by Islamophobe is Muslimphobe. Yeah. In which case you're trying to say, I'm afraid of medium brown-skinned people. And that's where you're trying to skew the argument away from the religion and towards the people because no one will defend a racist. Well, most people won't defend a racist. But there could be damn good reason to actually investigate the religion. And so I think that's where you kind of have to be like, whoa, we're talking about the religion itself, the ideas on paper, yeah. as people believe them, as objective fact, as people believe them. How you can call me an Islamophobe, I don't know. What you're really trying to say is, I'm a racist, basically. I'm afraid of the other people who don't look like me and believe it's that, weird uh, things. It, it's an argumentative fallacy that gets thrown around. It's like if you if you don't want to take the time or the effort or at least um, the cojones to step back and take an overall view in an argument, yep. you try to destroy that person's um, what's the right word? You try to destroy that person's public character, like the view uh, of that straw person. Straw man. Yeah. Well, no, no, that's. It, it's I like that set, straw man is usually where you're setting up a weak version of your opponents. It's um, it's like if you told me, um, you know, you think um, you think abortion should be legal for these reasons. Oh, you're and I'd be like, attacks. at hominem yeah, attacks. At you're hominem. attacking the person. I couldn't think of the attacking word. the man, not the argument. Um, and, and this is, to be honest, that's all it seems like. This is, seems to be a term that came from those arguments yeah. that people. They just wanted to shut down the arguments and yeah. made up a word. Well, and you also get the problem, and this is where moderate religious people come into it, and where they go, well, you know, it's the no true Scotsman fallacy where you get, well, no true Muslim would do that. Well, okay. If you're just going to define the Muslims out of Muslimhood, just basically ad hoc like oh they did a violent act so they weren't really a muslim well i don't know if you get to make that call i mean you're you're not the pope of the muslim world <laughs> yeah you're not the imam that's gonna like dictate all this stuff and i'm not saying and the, and i'm I, not saying the pope can speak for all christians either i wasn't going that far but um <laughs> there would be quite a few people who would disagree with that yeah um but you know it's the problem of looking at a group of people, the majority of whom are peaceful. I don't doubt that. I, I'm not arguing that. But that doesn't mean that you can't say that what most of you believe peacefully is more easily misconstrued in a dangerous manner. And to be fair, you're a little implicit because you don't seem to extremely strongly call that out in your own culture. You know, it, it seems like a lot of people, if they don't overtly endorse it, maybe sympathize with it, and again, that, that can go back to cultural and economic and political reasons. But it all blends together. And at some point, I get to say, well, ignoring everything else, ignoring all of those factors about who did it, blah, blah, is the idea that helped to drive them there more dangerous than others? Yeah. The answer to that is yes. And I think there are plenty of ways to look at the text and say, how is it, how is it often taught, preached, interpreted? The answer is yes, and I have every right to look at you and say that you deserve a little bit more attention right now than the other guy. He's not blowing me up. That seems reasonable to me. I would agree. Anyway, probably a good place to stop. Yep, well, um, 
that's all we had for this week. And again, our overall message is that um, terms like this shouldn't be thrown around just to try to chew away the discussion. We feel like um, discussion about many things should be had and uh, religion is not beyond criticism. I think everything should be up for discussion. Yeah. So don't try and call me a racist and expect me to just roll over as yeah. a result. Anyway, um, until next week, uh, let's see you a new article we've posted this last Friday. Maybe a more casual one if you haven't already read it. Um, mainly because I'm a little burnt out on the essay format right now. So I'm going to actually try and do like a blog post. Yeah. Which I don't do well. And um, uh, if you happen to be into Magic the Gathering, um, I had some articles up about um, the spoilers of the cards that have been released. Um, Michael and I did a part, uh, a two part um, set review going over all the cards that were released in this latest expansion called Dragon's Maze. Um, and I did a small blurb, blog post, whatever you want to call it, um, about kind of just my experience over the weekend and, and what I think. So Yeah, because we're um, not just atheists. We're yeah. nerds. We have many yeah. hobbies, yeah. if you want to call atheism a hobby. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> but magic certainly is. So anyway... Uh, enjoy that we'll probably be quieting down on the magic for a little while so hopefully i'll get back into the groove i know we skipped a podcast and all that but if you're here for the atheism and not the magic keep checking back on mondays we're gonna try and keep them popping out then yep. um maybe some small blog posts midweek and then articles on friday so follow us on the twitters the google pluses not the facebooks because we hate it um youtube youtube yes subscribe to our channel because it's amazing you get to see this <laughs> All day, every day. But uh, thanks for watching. Yep, see you next time.